Welcome to Off the Turf with Raging Cajun Softball. I'm your host, Greg Lonard, where we get an opportunity to meet some of the Raging Cajun Softball players on the field as well as a little off the field. Let's meet our next guest, Sarah Hudak. What's up, Sarah? How are you? Good, good. good. Uh, glad that you could be here. Uh, let's talk first about being a senior because you're a senior this year. Does it feel kind of kind of weird that you're uh, a senior now? I mean, not really weird. Just like it's just crazy how fast time goes. I mean, I just feel like yesterday I was a freshman, so. Uh, <laughs> Definitely trying to soak in uh, every experience that we have here. It's, I mean, it's already March. I mean, it's flying by, and uh, just really cherishing each moment. Yeah, that's that's uh, that's a big part of it, and just kind of taking in everything. Because once this is gone, like the four years, it's it's done with. It's over. Um, you have kind of a unique story because you didn't grow up playing softball. You actually played baseball in high school, and then actually played a, a year at a community college as well. Talk to me about that transition, going from getting involved in baseball, maybe not wanting to play softball at first, and then transitioning into playing softball. Yeah, so I mean, it's definitely not uh, the traditional route of a uh, girls growing up wanting to play college softball. But um, with my dad playing in the Astros, I, I grew up around it, so and I was just playing outside with the boys, so I thought nothing different of it. And uh, I was lucky enough to have nothing but good experiences with the boys, and my parents always supported me. So um, I'm very fortunate with my baseball experiences. I think it kind of benefits to that what player I am as a softball player and uh, I mean I just felt like it got to the point where it was I thought wanted to be first girl in the major leagues and the older you get <laughs> it's like okay you gotta get more realistic yeah. and uh, there's a lot more opportunity in softball but uh, I was very fortunate that coach Voracek at Bipsy he gave me the opportunity to play a year of junior college um, I left on my own terms which is something I was wanted to do I didn't mm -hmm. want to be pushed out of the of game of course and uh, I kind of walked away on my own terms, and then I was fortunate enough for uh, Joe Evans and A&M and Coach Glasgow to take me at A&M and back here with Glasgow again. Yeah, there you go. So, so, so how was it playing baseball and being with, with the guys? Did, did they kind of, was it a welcoming environment? They, did they welcome having a, a female on the team? Yeah, so all throughout Little League and high school, I was with the same group of guys. So like, oh, that's cool. They were like my brothers. Yeah. So uh, they treated me just like a sister, and they were always there. If someone was going to try to say something, they had my back. And uh, college is a little different because I didn't know anyone, mm -hmm. but uh, definitely like just how any guy would have to earn the respect, and I did. And uh, they definitely had my back out there, and I knew that if a team were to say something or try to do something, that they would be right there with me. All right. So, so why did you choose to go to A and M and then transfer here to Louisiana? Uh, so A and M, I mean, it just worked out perfectly because being from Sugarland, it's an hour and twenty minutes from my house. So uh, my parents were able to come to law and my twin sister actually is graduating from there this May. So nice. uh, I was there with her too. So Does she play softball at a &M? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> she was a cheerleader in high school. Oh, okay. She's in accounting now. She's, gotcha. She spends, the amount of time I spend at the field, she spends at the library. So um, I think just, I was fortunate enough that Coach Evans took the chance on me with not playing any softball. Uh, I knew it was going to be kind of hard for me to find uh a coach or a team that would take that chance on me, especially me wanting to play that caliber of competition because uh, I knew that I was capable of playing that. And uh, that's when I met Glasgow and I went on a, to a hitting camp mm -hmm. and then went on a visit and a month later I signed. And uh, I mean, the rest is history. I mean, my freshman year, I was able to go to the World Series and I was a starter, so like not many get to say that, yeah. but uh, it definitely was an easy transition. But uh, it definitely, I mean, it seemed to play, pay off. All right, so what's your favorite thing about being here at UL and playing in this beautiful Yvette Girard Field at Lamson Park? Uh, I mean, I just, the atmosphere, the fans, are, I mean, they treat you like family. They're always cooking for us, and I mean, you, you think that those are your parents, honestly, or yeah. just relatives, like, they treat you like family, and I think the whole atmosphere that's created here, and I mean, you saw, like, at the LSU game, just, like, the energy, it's like they're in every single pitch, and uh, just so appreciative of what the coaches do and what the fans have here and uh, I mean there's no type it's a very unique college experience and it's uh, I don't think really a, any other college program really has the atmosphere that we have here at Lamson. And Coach, Coach Glasgow said that, that this that atmosphere was was rivaled like any super regional he's ever oh, been yeah. in. So that was kind of cool. All right, let's let's. I know we're on the we on the tarp here because it's going to rain <laughs> at some point. So let's let's get in your stance. Let's see what your stance okay. looks like. I'm, we're going to make believe that there's a there's a plate here, but I think we're kind of in the right area. So. We're all lefties here too. Yeah. So so show me your lefty stance. What what does it feel like? What does it look um, like for you? I'm more of a field hitter. So mm -hmm. I mean. I keep. I don't really have much of a wide or a step. I'm kind of quiet step. So, okay. I mean, I keep kind of my hands relaxed, and I try not to think a lot of mechanics when I'm in the box. It's at that point with the hundreds of swings that we put in during the week. Uh, it just kind of having good mental space because hitting's mental. Like one oh, yeah, day the 100%. ball 
ball may look like a beach ball and the next day may look like a little BB. So, uh, <laughs> I mean, it's just really just staying mentally just on cue or yeah. just keeping your head on swivel. And uh, I think just really staying relaxed and really just extending through. So I really try to think. So you're a little relaxed. open stance wise. I'm a little bit, yeah. yeah. So I'm a little bit and I'm more like balanced in the middle. And I try you to keep get your a, hands a, going a little yeah, bit. Yeah, I try to get a rhythm. So yeah. like, especially like with my breathing and kind of with my movements. Because uh, I can tell, like, whenever I start to get antsy or, like, if I'm not performing as well, I get more tense and it's mm -hmm. all not as fluid. Looking. Loose muscles or fast yeah, muscles. exactly. Yeah. So it's just kind of going back to the basics and just staying relaxed. And mine's a lot more quiet compared to some of them. Like, Julie has a very big leg kick compared to I was going to say, you said you're a little quieter, so you're not up here. You're kind of more just close it yeah, off right and then go here. forward. And right there. So yeah. mine's pretty quiet. Yeah. But... Okay, now talk to me about your approach to the plate. You said obviously a lot of it is mental. We know hitting is a lot mental wise, but talk to me about your approach in terms of, I know it's different varying on whether you have a runner in scoring position or if you're a lead off, but what's your general approach when you get into the batter's box? Mm -hmm. I mean, I try not to think too much as to like, she's gonna throw this and this, like throw a change up in this counter. Yeah. She's gonna try to do that. Uh, I like knowing tendencies. So like what kind of, what she's most comfortable going with to a lefty hitter and um, just kind of sticking to I'm going to hit a ball that's in this region or I'm going to stay I'm going to hit a ball if I see it up middle half middle in or middle out it likes kind of sitting sides of the plate and uh, if I'm not feeling good at all it's if it looks if it looks like it's going to be in the zone just swing out of it yeah. so uh, I mean just really just really staying through it I don't try to I mean all my home runs are usually that way I don't think about really ripping I just think about trying to stay up through the middle because yeah. that's my best chance my barrel staying through the zone for a longer time, a uh, better chance of putting the ball in play. Favorite spots to hit in the lineup? Ooh, um, I like two hole. I mean, I like them all, honestly. Lead you're just, like, you're just happy hard. being in the lineup. I'm just happy to be in the lineup. Just loves to be lead in the lineup. Lead off's hard. <laughs> lead off's a lot of pressure because, I mean, you can't swing at the first pitch sometimes. And mm -hmm. like you, I mean, you kind of like are getting a feel for like the whole lineup to what she's throwing. But um, I mean, just wherever in the lineup, wherever I'm needed, so. I hear you. So. A lot this year because uh, Sarah was, was an outfielder, but now she's kind of transitioned over to first base. And we had asked Coach Glasgow recently about your versatility, and he, he talked about at length how important that is to the team. What, what's it been like going from the outfield and moving to first base? We noticed that you don't even use the first baseman's glove. You just stick with your outfielder's glove. Yeah, so in the fall I played it a little bit, and then over Christmas break he just said just stick to the outfield. Uh, so I didn't really do much there. And then when we got back, it was against, the game against Lamar. I, I saw he put the – lineup or the positions on the board and I was like what? <laughs> I was like okay like I mean I'm gonna go anywhere that he needs me to yeah. and um I just so we didn't even talk to you about that he just kind of put you in yeah. there and just oh yeah said, no, just, can do yeah it. so uh, I mean because in like towards the end of the fall I started working more at first base and uh so I wasn't completely uncomfortable but it was definitely different but I like it because I mean you're engaged in almost every every play. Yeah, that was my position. So yeah. I, I know what you're talking yeah. about there. It's, it's every ground ball you have something oh, yeah. to do, yeah. which is, which is kind of cool. So now when you're preparing for a game, do you have any routines that you have to do before a game? Any superstitions, anything like that? Well, I wear like the Oakleys, like the glasses, yeah, the goggles, the goggles. Yeah. So I got to make sure they're clean. Uh, sometimes it takes a couple of uh, cleans, but uh, that's mainly my big thing. I'm not really superstitious because then that's when I just start overthinking. I just yeah. try to go up there dumb brain, really. Just play. Dumb just brain. play. Dumb I like brain. That dumb brain. Um, let, let's talk about a person in your life that was super influential to you softball-wise or just baseball-wise. I know you mentioned your dad was in, was uh, played with the Astros. Is he somebody that, that's really been influential to you or is there somebody else that's been influential to your softball life? Yeah, no, I mean, my dad is definitely, that's something that we've always bonded over is baseball, but... Uh, he definitely was kind of learning with me as the softball was going, but uh, he's been uh, one of my biggest supporters, and I know I can go to him, and he he'll tell me the honest truth. He'll he'll know when to when I need comfort and when I need uh, the criticism. So, uh, I mean, having him in my corner, I've always been very fortunate to have such a, a good baseball mind. But as well, I mean, they correlate very well, or they're very similar in my mind, uh, and just being able to have that brain to pick is uh, definitely an advantage to me. Favorite softball memory. I know there's probably a lot of them. Ooh, I mean, the atmosphere, how Glass was talking about Super Regionals, uh, whenever we were in Tennessee, game three, and whenever we went to the World Series, uh, I can say that the game against LSU was the exact same energy. And I mean, that definitely took over my favorite one, was being LSU with a packed house. So it was definitely a, one I won't ever forget. All right, here's our last one. And we like to do this one for the kids. And there's a lot of little girls that, that look up to you guys here. Do you have a, a little bit of a tip maybe for a, a young softball player? 
Yeah, um, I mean, just really just don't let people tell you what you can't do. And I mean, if you if you love doing doing a sport, or doing a hobby, and just go out there and do it, and don't really think about what others do. Uh, have thick skin. Uh, I mean, I've always had had to have that with uh, going against the grain. It's it's not it's not a bad thing. It's honestly a good thing. And uh, I think just keeping your mind open and just having fun. Sarah Hudak has been our guest here on Off the Turf with Raging Cajun Softball. Uh, again, you find her at first base, the outfield. You never know where you're going to find her on the never softball know. field. But just come on out to Lampson Park. She'll be in the lineup and she'll be doing some big things here on the turf with Raging Cajun Softball. Thanks, Sarah. Thank you.